Let's tackle class example number three and consider the equation two sine squared x equals one minus sine x. And we're going to solve a second degree equation using algebra. So use an algebraic approach to determine the roots of the equation where x is between zero and two pi and give the solution as exact values. So let's take a look at this. We have actually, we have terms on both the left and right side, but we know how to solve a quadratic equation. And we're going to use that same approach by bringing everything to one side. So if we do this, we would say that we have our two sine squared x, and then let's bring this to the other side, so minus one, and then also add the sine x here. And when we do that, when we subtract one and then add sine x, then this would be zero and zero, so this is equal to zero. Now this looks a little bit complicated, but if we can think of it in a different way, we might be able to recognize how to solve it. So if we think of sine x, as just equal to maybe a different x, maybe a different looking x like that, then this would now look like if sine squared x, remember that sine squared x is equal to uh, sine x squared. So for example, when we have it like this with this squared, it really means that it's sine x times sine x. So this is all squared. Okay, well, that means then sine squared x just means x squared, this fancy x squared. And then let's put this, in the second spot, we'll say this is instead of sine x, we'll call it that fancy x again. And then the minus one is at the end, we'll say that equals zero. Well, this is a familiar looking quadratic equation and we can solve this by either factoring or we might have to use quadratic formula, but let's take a look here to see if we can factor this trinomial. So it looks like it'll be a product of binomials. And in order to get two x squared for the first term, the only way to get that really here is using two x and x. Now to get the last term, it's a product of these last two numbers. And to get negative one, we would need positive one and negative one. So let's see if we try a negative one here and a positive one. And then we can check with multiplication to see if this is correct. So two x times x is two x squared. Two x plus times plus one is two x and then minus an x that would give us the positive x that we need and negative one times positive one is negative one. So this actually works out. Now, if this is not comfortable for you, you could also use the AC method, which in this case, you take two and multiply by negative one. And so we're looking for two values that multiply to get negative two, but add to get positive one. So those two values are going to be, neg I think, positive two and then negative one. And so what you would do is split up this middle term. So you start off with two x squared plus x minus one equals zero, but we're splitting up this middle term into these two coefficients here. So we have two x squared and say it's plus two x and then minus one x, which of course ends up being this positive x here, but this minus one. And now we can factor by grouping. So two x squared plus two x, you could take out a common factor of 2x, which would be x plus 1. And then here with this minus 1x minus 1, you can factor out this negative 1 here, and you would have x. And then notice that this is going to be plus 1. So now we notice that we have the common factor of x plus 1. So that can be in the front here. And then that's multiplied by 2x and also multiplied by negative 1. And then we have the same. Uh, it's in a different order, of course, but multiplication is commutative, which means that you can change the order of the other multiplication and it's still the same thing. So this is equal to zero now. And that means when we have the a product of two things equaling zero, then that means we can say bracket A could be zero or bracket B could be zero. And that would result in something being zero. So let's first solve for this bracket A. If this bracket A was equal to zero, then two X minus one would equal zero. and then that means that two x would equal one, positive one. And then divided by two, we have x would equal a half. Now remember that this x actually is this kind of fancy looking x, and we're going to have to change back to sine x uh, in a second here. Let's just solve for b, this bracket b equaling zero, which means that x plus one could equal zero. Remember so this fancy looking x, and this fancy looking x would equal then negative one. Now we can actually go back and say, well, this fancy x, was equal to sine x, but we just put it as fancy x to make it look simpler. 
So this is sine x is equal to a half. And over here we have sine x is equal to negative one. So let's solve this first case. This is now a first degree um, equation, a trig equation that we can solve. We imagine thinking about it this way, where if this was a half, then a half is about there. We can see there's one angle that makes that um, a half. And then there's another angle, we'll call it a red angle over on this side. And we take a look at this, it means that, well, the second value here is going to be an angle that makes that, which is going to be a full pi or 180 degrees minus what the reference angle is. So we'll just say what this reference angle is, x ref. And what is the other one? Well, the other one is actually it's in the first quadrant. So that x1 is actually equal to the reference angle. Well, what would the reference angle be? Well, you can take x and say, that's the sine inverse of the value of a half. Yeah, you'd probably use your degree mode on your calculator and find that x is equal to 30 degrees. But in radian mode, you see how it's, um, the restrictions here are in radian. So we can just use radian mode here. This is going to be pi over six, which is the equivalent of 30 degrees. Okay, so x1 is equal to pi over six. And x2 is pi minus that pi over six. And we can think of it this way. We can say, well, a full pi is like six pi over six minus pi over six. And then we can say that's five pi over six. All right, and for this sine x equaling negative one, we draw that it's down here and we know that's 270 degrees. Or we can say that this is actually x will be equal to three pi over two radians. So we have these three answers, x1, x2, and here x3. And now we're, let's just check the interval here. x is between zero and two pi, and that covers them all. There's one here in the first quadrant, one in the second quadrant. There's also one that straddles the third and fourth here right in the middle. And then if we went to the next one, it would be past two pi radians. So we are done finding all the solutions within this interval. But in part B, we're asked to state the general solution of the equation. So you imagine if you are at the blue answer, you can actually add or subtract full revolutions and stay on that same spot and come back to that terminal arm. Similarly, you can also do that with the red. If you start at the red, you can add or subtract full revolutions. And same thing here with the three pi over two. So in fact, the general solution is saying that x could be equal to, starting at the blue one, pi over six, and then you can add any multiple of full re revolutions and you'd be fine. So two pi times any multiple here, and that's n could be any integer. So it could be zero, one, or negative one, negative two, or two. Now another answer, Family, family of answers is taking five pi over six and doing that same thing. After getting to five pi over six, you could add two uh, pi and any multiple of two pi and being any integer and you would have another answer as well. The third x comes from three pi over two and you can add any multiple of two pi and you would get another answer. So the general solution here is that x could be pi over six plus two pi n, n being any integer. Same thing with five pi over six plus any multiple of two pi in either direction. And then three pi over two plus two pi n, and n could be any integer. So that is the general solution to the equation.